Good evening and thank you for joining us on O-State TV's first edition of Countdown to Tip-Off. I'm Greg Semino. And I'm Corbin Wheeler, and this is a production of OSU School of Media and Strategic Communications. And we are coming to you live from everyone's favorite staple in Stillwater, Eskimo Joe's. That's right, people are finishing up their cheese fries and burgers, and they're getting ready to head over to Gallagher Ivor Arena for the game tonight. And that's right, Corbin, because tonight is Bedlam. That's right, Greg, and you know, Bedlam is really important to both of these schools, as everyone in the state knows. I mean, they're only separated by 80 miles down Interstate 35. The two compete in the Team Co. Bedlam Series, an all-sports competition that is decided by wins and loss in head-to-head -head competition. And last season, OSU won that battle 17-14, to and this season, they're already currently ahead with wins in football, soccer, cross-country, and wrestling. And the Cowboys will look to get a win in men's basketball tonight as they suffered a loss earlier this month in Norman. And one player that's no stranger to a really good battle matchup is Phil Forte. In his junior year, he's a seasoned vet and he's a stud behind the arc. And you know, in all these battle matchups he's had, he's played in five. He's reached double figures, even boasting 20 points in Norman last season. Forte and the Pokes are going to be looking for revenge against the Sooners in Gallagher Ivor Arena tonight. In his junior season, on a roster filled with freshmen and transfers, Bill Forte has emerged as a leader to the Cowboy newcomers. Despite early losses in conference play, Forte has taken it upon himself to introduce the young guns to the Big 12. So a lot of work to do, so about 11 conference games left, so, but you know, at this point, we have a lot of young guys, so I'm just trying to teach them kind of what it's like. And, uh, we have a lot of new guys that really haven't been to the Big 12, and so it's just a learning experience for them. I'm just trying to tell them kind of what it's like. Each and every day. For the first time since he was young, Forte is playing on a team without Marcus Smart at the point. He says senior LSU transfer Anthony Hickey has filled the void left by the current Boston Celtic. Hick's done a great job coming in. Uh, you know, for a year, he's had to try to learn the offense and defense really quick, and he's done a great job with this picking it up, you know, trying to take off on Marcus left. And, you know, he really affects the game in so many ways, defensively and offensively. And this is aggressiveness and competitiveness that he brings to us every day is what I think really helps with him. Forte is ranked second in the Big 12 in scoring, making 22 threes on the season so far and averaging 18 points a game. Known for being a deep threat, he's no stranger to dishing it to an open man down low, like senior Michael Cobbins, who says having a teammate like Forte is invaluable. I feel like it's outstanding. You know, he hits great shots for us. He, he pretty much just lays it all out there on the line. He brings toughness, he brings heart, and he brings passion to the game. With Bedlam and Stillwater, Forte is ready to seek revenge in front of a packed Gallagher Iba Arena. And the fans are going to be into it. And, you know, both teams are going to bring their best out. So it's just going to be a battle of you know, who wants it more and who can execute the game plan. So hopefully, Saturday, you know, we have. You know, this place filled up, and, uh, you know, we can move it on the court. So, yeah. Now, Forte is not only ranked in the Big 12 in scoring, but he's also ranked first in minutes, averaging 34 minutes a game. And joining me now to talk about Forte and the rest of the Cowboys is Dan Lindblad. Now, Dan... The Cowboys were victorious against Baylor earlier this week. Break down some of the key things that helped the Cowboys get that victory. What really helped OSU in that victory against Baylor was not one person was doing one thing. It was a group effort. You had a different leading rebounder, a different leading assist player, a different leading scorer. Everybody was doing their part to make sure that it was a good team win. And that's something you need to do in Big 12 basketball. You had great assists by Anthony Hickey. He had 10 assists. You had Shine coming off the bench going perfect from three points and scoring 11 points and only missing one or two shots from inside. So, and struggling, this team struggles with the bench. Only very few times do they get a leading score from the bench. In fact, it's only happened twice, including the Baylor game in Big 12 Conference games this season. That's right, Dan. That was a really good victory for the Cowboys to have against the top 25 ranked team, mm -hmm. which they also will have a chance against OU tonight, who is also ranked in the top 25. Now, when they went to Norman earlier this month, they kind of struggled a little bit. Definitely. Not the best performance. Kind of break down and talk about some of the things they need to do to kind of fix things up and maybe get a victory tonight. It all started going down 11 to 2. If you go down 11 to 2, we already know this team struggles in Norman. We've seen it the past couple of years. Going down such a big amount so early doesn't help the cause. But they also have Heald, Cousins, Woodard, 
all these guys who score, I think Woodard is the only one of the starting five who doesn't score in double digits on average. So, and when you have OSU have Forte and Nash averaging about 17, Heald averages right around that amount. Top three scores in Big 12 all in the same court playing against each other should be a fun matchup. It really should, and it'll be interesting to see how the Cowboys adjust defensively because in the matchup in Norman, Heald was perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, it just seemed like he really couldn't just stop making those threes. And, you know, watching it, I was there watching from the stands, you know, it's kind of heartbreaking. So it'll be interesting to see how the Cowboys can adjust defensively to, you know, hopefully get that win tonight. Yeah, and sometimes the thing about basketball is with some of these guys, if they make their first two or three shots, they're not going to miss. So if they can just make them miss or at least contest a couple shots early, get them off their game, it's going to do wonders for them. That's right. Well, um, we, OSU definitely has a lot of things they need to adjust. And, you know, Dan, thank you so much for joining us and giving us that analysis. Now we're going to head over to Tori Perzard, who is in the building talking to some fans, getting ready for the game. Tori? Thanks, Corbin. I'm standing right by the entrance of Eskimo Joe's. The crowd is great. They're loud. The energy is good. The wait is not terribly long, but that shouldn't stop anybody from coming to get a Joe's special or a plate of cheese fries. Stay tuned because when we get back, I sit down with one of Eskimo Joe's special people. This is Countdown to Tip Off. Life is a journey, and this is the path you've chosen to get there. The work is challenging, the hours are long, but the opportunities are endless. On this path, you won't be alone. Generations have walked these grounds before you. Many will be walking by your side, and others will guide your steps. The path will bring times of great excitement. And the view will be amazing. At the end of this path will come a feeling of accomplishment, a time for celebration. Every path begins with a first step. For many of you, you're taking that first step today. For others, you're resuming your journey. But for all of us, it's gonna be an exciting year. Go Pokes. Welcome back to O-State TV's Countdown to Tip-Off. I'm Greg Semino. And I'm Corbin Wheeler, and we are live at Eskimo Joe's Clothes, which is attached to the Eskimo Joe's restaurant. And for 40 years, Eskimo Joe's has been a staple in the Stillwater community and has become widely known around the world. That's right. For uh, Steve File and Stan Clark opened the establishment in 1975 as a bar. 72 shirts were available on day one, and they were sold out within one week. By 1984, Joe's was a full-service restaurant, and the world was introduced to foul things, Little Joe's, and of course, cheese fries. 
In 1992, the dome was open, doubling the seating capacity of the restaurant, and each year the celebration for the anniversary grows during the week of July 21st. And this year, Stillwater's Jumpin' Little Juke Joint will celebrate 40 years at 501 Elm Street. The anniversary week is definitely something to come out and celebrate in the summer. I mean, I think cheese fries are something that are worth celebrating. O-State TV reporter Tori is inside the dome area of the restaurant with a special guest right now. Tori? Here's Keonti Roberts. Hi, I'm here with Stan. Stan, how are you doing today? I couldn't be better. Thrilled to have you guys here. Thank you. I see you brought a special guest. Who is this? Pardon me? I see you brought a special guest with you. I Who sure is did. This? this is my son, Hudson. Hi, Hudson. How are you? I'm good. That's good. Stan, I know that you and your childhood friend, Steve File, opened Eskimo Joe's together. Tell me the beginning processes of what it took to open a bar in Stillwater. Well, it was just, you know, it's totally a wild hair. Two weeks after graduation, I'm on the couch at Steve's house, and uh, Steve says, hey, Clark, I'm going to open a bar. And I go, hey, that sounds great. I'll go in partners with you. Fifteen minutes later, we shook hands with the owner of the building, and uh, 40 years later, here we are. That's great. Uh, where did the name Eskimo Joe's come from? Well, Steve Pyle gets all the credit. You know, we're, we're talking about what are we going to call the place? And Steve goes, Eskimo Joe's. All our friends go, Eskimo Joe's. Everybody chants, Eskimo Joe's. So that's where the name came from. Now, fortunately, I was kind of a marketing guru at age 22 because I had three hours of marketing at Oklahoma State. <laughs> but I knew we needed a logo. Young man, 18 years old, designed our logo. First one he ever rendered, Eskimo Joe and Buffy. Rest is history. That is awesome. Your restaurant, and especially your retail brand, has gained international notoriety. Tell me why you have not opened another location outside of Stillwater. Because Stillwater is so cool. Oklahoma State is so cool. Oklahoma uh, my State. My heart and soul is here, and that's what it's all about. And every time I look at other places, they just didn't match up to OSU and Stillwater. And so, so we're one of a kind, and uh, hopefully we're very unique in that regard. Stan, I know that you are a very humble person, and I know that Stan Clark Companies does a lot for the Stillwater community. Tell me how your company impacts Stillwater. Well, first of all, I'm most proud of the fact we've uh, impacted a lot of students' lives over the last 40 years. Literally tens of thousands of young people have worked here, helped get their uh, get through OSU, obviously, but also hopefully learned some very valuable life lessons and uh, created some lifelong friends. So we take a lot of pride in being a part of a lot of kids' lives. Heck, I met my wife here, uh, countless stories like that. So. A lot of special relationships started right here in the last 40 years. Thanks, Stan. Hudson, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. How often do you come to Eskimo Joe's to eat? As much as I can. As much <laughs> as you can. I like that answer. Um, what is your favorite meal here? Uh, ribeye and some cheese fries. Your cheese fries. Do you get bacon on those cheese fries? Yes. That's awesome. So do I. They're really good, aren't they? Yeah. That's good. Stan, one last question. What is... <laughs> What does the future hold for Eskimo Joe's? Well, we hope to just keep uh, showing everybody a great time. Our mission is just to delight every guest by giving my best, and uh, hopefully we're doing that tonight. And we just want to be a fun part of Stillwater and Oklahoma State for as long as we can keep it going, and uh, hopefully that will be at least another 40 years. Well, I can say thank you so much for being on the show. I know Stillwater really appreciates you, including you, Hudson. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank Greg. You, Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Greg, <laughs> Greg and Corbin, back to you. Thanks, Tori. And aside from the Joe's restaurant, Eskimo Joe's Clothes hosts one of the most famous t-shirts around the world. And joining me now from Eskimo Joe's store is Kendra Moreland. Thank you for joining us. Great. So much fun to be here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, Kendra, when coming up with a shirt, what goes behind coming up with a design for it? Oh, wow. Well, we have a lot of input. Um, we take guest input in our store. Um, our team has input. And, um, you know, we have one artist who draws most of the animated Eskimo Joe designs. And his name's Mike Stavis. He's been doing it for, for years. And uh, that's his job. And, you know, he puts such thought and detail into every design that he does. I mean, right down to, um, if I could tell you a quick story, I'm thinking of the fireman shirt that we did 
just a few years ago. And uh, he and I had walked over to the fire department to talk to our local firemen and you know kind of get some inspiration, look at the trucks and that sort of thing. When we were done with the design, Mike walked it back over there and I just remember standing there and one of the guys looking at the truck, he goes, oh my gosh, that's our winch, you know, on the fire truck. And I didn't even know there were different kinds of winches, but yeah. that's the detail that he puts in those shirts is, you know, down to particular items on a truck or, you know, the way the seams are lined up on a football, on a football design. And I mean, just finite details. Um, so it's a, it's a lot of fun because that gives us a lot to talk to the guests about. And um, there's always, you know, little things to look for in every Eskimo Joe design. Absolutely, and I mean, you can't go around this town without not seeing something Eskimo Joe's, whether it's a cup, a t-shirt. <laughs> what can you tell us about, I mean, how many, how much shirts do you guys sell in a, in a year? Oh, wow. Well, you know, uh, we've started in 1975, so this is our 40th year, and shirts have been a part of the mix from day one. So, I mean, literally tens of thousands of Joe shirts, um, you know, have, have gone out that door and really just traveled all around the world. I mean, we're, um, we're elated that our, our fans do take our shirts and go places, and it's so much fun to hear stories of when people were on vacation or, you know, they live in another state, and they send us notes saying, I saw an Eskimo Joe shirt. <laughs> And then, of course, we have our wall of fame at EskimoJoes.com, where um, our guests literally do send us pictures of them, you know, doing something cool in an Eskimo Joe shirt. And you know, that's that's probably one of the most rewarding things is to be able to see all those shirts and see that people care enough to, to take this shirt with them and share it as a part of their you know family adventures right on I mean I've, I've been to the one in Tulsa the uh -huh. store in Tulsa so right? and I'm from New York and we I've seen Eskimo Joe shirts in New York City I love it so love I mean it. we're all over the place um, so what else I mean we have cups also are very mm -hmm. popular what why are the cups so popular do you think <laughs> well because they're Oklahoma China <laughs> no, just kidding um, you know uh, the cups we we have about a probably a half a million of those a year that, that walk out this door and um, they're very durable they're you know of course when they're here it's drinkware but people take them home and like I said you know it, it's kind of a joke but we people <laughs> have called it Oklahoma China because right. you know most Okies have one cup <laughs> tucked away in the cabinet and in the case of my cabinet I mean my whole kitchen's full of them but they're used for other things when folks get them home too I mean they scoop out dog food they um, <laughs> they hold pencils you know in teachers classrooms I mean they're they're multi-useful <laughs> you, you, you can't go into any student's uh, dorm or apartment with without seeing those cups. <laughs> we love it that way. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So we have the 40th anniversary coming up this uh, in the summer. Right. What could we be expecting from Joe's Ooh. clothes as far as maybe a shirt design or other merchandise that you guys have Oh, planning? you bet. Well, you know, 40th is a huge milestone for us. And uh, so we can't wait till mid-July comes around this summer. We will, of course, have an awesome anniversary design. That's one of the ways that, that we um, celebrate our anniversary every year is with a special shirt. So that should be coming out probably in mid-April and um, then the whole week in July will be full of food, drink, and awesome bands. Okay, awesome. And uh, one last important question before we let Ooh, you go. Kendra. Okay. What is your favorite Eskimo Joe shirt? Oh, well, I love the classic design, just the circle with Eskimo Joe and Buffy in it. Um, I have it in about every color and uh, wear it pretty much daily. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kendra, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Make sure to stop by Eskimo Joe's Clothes for all your uh, graduation and holiday gifts. The classic shirts make great uh, gifts. And also for other OSU apparel. You bet. So coming up, Michael Cobbins, healthier and better than ever. He talks. To, we talked to him about his season being back on the court. And we'll also take a trip around the Big 12 when O-State TV's Countdown to Tip-Off returns. No, you actually you'll probably have to ask questions and answers and more and more questions. Yeah, None of this possible without asking one in the first place. Every great solution inspires a greater question. Our greatest discoveries are always before us. In less than half a lifetime, 
Unforeseen questions could a philosopher spark in a physicist? What might the youngest student offer the most accomplished scientist? The issues we face aren't math or medicine or mechanical problems. They're human problems, with each of us playing a vital role. What a waste it would be for bright minds to never chase the unknown, to memorize but never discover. It's our job to ignite in the next generation. A passion to learn, and then a passion to lead. To give them tools so they learn how to use them. To give them guidance so they have someone to turn to. And then, when they're faced with their own set of challenges, they'll know they can solve them. Billions of people whose lives are made better by the questions we ask might never wonder how many degrees we've earned or awards we've won. No. What matters is simple. Did what we discover in here difference to learn is to serve let's learn boldly down to tip off. I'm Tori Broussard. I'm standing inside Eskimo Joe's clothes and if you have not gotten any gifts for your Valentine's this Valentine's Day, stop by the store before and after the game. Eskimo Joe's has these new and my personal favorite Eskimo Joe's Be Mine t-shirts. You can also get a Valentine's Day package which has two Eskimo Joe's cups, a t-shirt, and some candy inside. There's also really cute Eskimo Joe's headbands and the uh, some Eskimo Joe dogs, Buffy the dog. This will be the and for those of you who like to write, like myself, there are these really cute metallic, large looking pencils. I actually saw a couple of shirts that are my size right around the corner. So while I do a little bit of shopping around, let's get back to Greg whoa, and Corbin. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey, change the battery, change the battery. No, battery dead. Camera died, the camera died. The cam and Gerald to the comments package. Ready, camera A, go camera A. In the last game before the conference closed last season, the Cowboys lost one of its most significant leaders three and a half minutes into a game against the Starting center Michael Coppins tore his Achilles tendon, leaving a big hole inside the paint for the Cowboys last season. Since returning to the court, Coppins has started 17 games this year. The question is, how does he feel? Physically, I feel great. You know, uh, getting my confidence level back up, my conditioning is pretty great. And, uh, Work on all that Cobbins' return has been noticed not only in the stat sheet as he is second on the team with 101 rebounds, but also by his teammates. It's great to have Mike back. Last year, I think we all saw the impact that he has on the team. And, you know, I've played with Mike for three years now, and so uh, just he's a great leader. And a veteran player that his coaches need for the Cowboys to have success the rest of the hey. season, especially with four straight games against ranked opponents. Hit, hey, hit the, hit the play. Tonight. Oh, the oh, yeah. We got 30 seconds. Uh, Michael, Michael. Waiting for him to really hit the stride. Play. I think he's got it in him and he will at some point. In the win against Baylor, Cobbins had a season-high 11 rebounds and matched a career-high by blocking five shots. Tonight, the Cowboys will need the number two shot blocker in the Big 12 at his best in order to split this season's Bedlam series. And as you saw there, Michael Cobbins, who is back in the lineup for the Cowboys, was 
very missed uh, last season. And he's going to have his work cut out for him tonight as he goes up against Ryan Spangler with his 160 rebounds, which is second in the Big 12. That's right, Greg. And speaking of Big 12 players, um, let's go ahead and do a little bit of like a bedlam breakdown tonight for this game. We're going to start with Phil Forte for the Pokes and Buddy Heald for the Sooners. Both these guys are big time scorers. Buddy Heald actually leads the Big 12 in scoring, averaging 20 points a game, and Phil Forte isn't far behind at number two, averaging 18 a game. And you, well, let's go back to Buddy Heald. Last time in, in Norman, he killed the Cowboys. He had 27 points. He was 10 from 10 from the field, four for four behind the arc. He's OU's guy. If OSU has a chance, they're going to have to stop him tonight. That's right. And next, we're going to go into, you know, kind of a big man, big man game, rebound game. No, we got LeBron Nash, who's really kind of stepped his game up. You know, he has 111 rebounds on the season so far. And Michael Cobbins, you know, is also doing work down low and becoming a big factor. And then for the Sooners, as you mentioned, Ryan Spangler, he is just such a beast down low. So. Hopefully the Cowboys find a way tonight, you know, to kind of slow him down a little bit on the boards. And Michael Cobbins, like you were saying, he re he had a great he had a season high of 11 rebounds against Baylor, but his specialty is blocks. This guy is a block shot machine. He had five a career high against Baylor, and they're going to need him in this game. In the last game in Norman, he got really kind of taken out of the game. Was in early foul trouble, so he couldn't really be there. They're going to need him to compete for rebounds against Spangler. That's right, and then you know, can't forget about assists, you know. That's something sometimes that gets overlooked. Against Baylor, Anthony Hickey had 11 assists, and that was spectacular on his part, you know, on fast breaks, looking up the court, hitting players like Forte and Shine in the corner at the top of the key, so he put in a lot of good work, too. Yes, and it's uh, absolutely the three-year um, LSU starter now at OSU. It's good that they have a, a good transition from Marcus Smart to, with Anthony Hickey playing the position there. That's um, right. I know both of those guys, or all the guys on the team have definitely, you know, felt the presence of him on the team so far this year. He's done a really good job. Absolutely. And just to let you know, the Bedlam series is not over. We still have women's basketball who has their matchup against the Sooners here in Stillwater on March 2nd. That'll be the Cowgirls' final game of the season. And we also have softball and baseball to look forward to. So the Teamco Bedlam series is far from over. That's right, Greg. And now let's kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the Big 12, how it's become such a presence this season just overall in a number of sports, you know, not just football, but, you know, basketball, softball, baseball, you know, especially with baseball winning the Big 12 last season, you know. Big 12 is really making a name for itself. Yeah, and so let's take a look right now at the Big 12 standings of what we have so far this season. Okay, uh, we're going to around the Big 12, actually. We got some scores for you. West Virginia beating Texas Tech 77 to 55. And TCU and Iowa State faced off. Iowa State won that 83 to 66. TCU's really struggled this season. They only have one conference win. And we have Bedlam. Well, Kansas has the Sunflower Showdown. We had Kansas and Kansas State going at it. And as you can see, the Jayhawks overtook that one as they are ranked in the top 10. And we have Bail uh, Baylor and Texas going on right now in the first half. And of course, we have OSU and OU coming up in just a bit. That's right. And now, let's stick with the Big 12 and kind of talk about the standings. You know, like it's been very competitive throughout the season. Obviously, Kansas, as usual, is at the top of the conference at 6-1. and one. In the middle of the pack, we got West Virginia, Iowa State, both tied at 5-2. and two. You know, West Virginia's kind of been a surprise factor in the Big 12 this season. And then next we have Kansas State, who is at 5-3. And, and we're just going to give you a quick update on the Baylor-Texas game. Baylor is up 47-35 in the first half. OSU, we're going back to the standings now. OSU stands at the middle of the pack with a 4-4 four four record, followed by Baylor, Texas, OU, and TCU and Texas Tech, both with only one conference win. That's right, Greg. And, and, you know, Big 12, especially with basketball this season, has been so competitive. You know, one thing that I think really got the ball rolling is early in the season, Texas was ranked in the top 10. They were ranked number 9. And OU traveled to Austin, and they beat them on their home court. And from there, things just kind of started rolling with the Big 12 kind of on a roller coaster. Absolutely. I think right now you could make an argument that the Big 12 is the powerhouse for basket, uh, college basketball with six teams ranked inside the top 25. OSU has a chance to crack that with earlier this week with a win over 20, number 20 Baylor and 
possibly a win tonight against 24 Oklahoma. But, you know, not just basketball. I think we the Big 12 has proven that it's kind of a powerhouse even in things like football as we saw TCU and Baylor this year right on the cusp of a college football playoff berth. So the Big 12 is really starting to spread its dominance elsewhere. That's right. I I just am amazed at what, you know, football brought for the Big 12 this season and I've really enjoyed watching how the Big 12 has unfolded for basketball as well. And it's not over like we said. We still have the spring sports, baseball, softball to look forward to. Um, in any news, we're getting ready. We're not that far away from tip-off here. Game is at 7 on ESPN2. And if you're in the car, tune in to Cowboy, uh, Cowboy Radio Nation with Dave Hunziger and Kelly Holcomb with the play-by-play. -play. Right, and this has been a production of OSU School of Media and Strategic Communication. Make sure you stop by Eskimo Joe's before the game or after the game. Grab some food. You know, I know I enjoy the sweet pepper bacon cheese fries. Or maybe just go and pick up a shirt. And as always, enjoy the game and go Pokes!